Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's learn how to use the tool. Alright, get it guys, and welcome back today to another Obsidian video. Anyone with a pulse who plays Tabletop RPGs has likely heard of the massive amount of noise that's been caused over the last few weeks in regards to the Wizards of the Coast trying to kill off the OGL. Uh, what an absolute wild ride that has been. We're just coming off the back end of the uh, announcement that they're going to release the entire SDR under... Um, the Creative Commons license, which is a, uh, a massive, massive win in my opinion for um, you know digital tools around. That's that's a fantastic outcome for us. But what it's resulted in is there's a lot of people in the community who are looking for other tabletop RPGs, and there's a huge chunk of them, uh, specifically having a look at Pathfinder Second Edition. Myself included, I've gone out and I've bought my uh, Pathfinder Second Edition Core Rulebook, and uh, I've been reading through the rules, and I actually really quite like what I see. It kind of fixes a lot of the problems that I had with Fifth Edition from my you know, my first few playthroughs. So um, I'm really quite liking the direction that's going. But obviously, that starts to uh, raise the question as well: If I'm going to play this game, how am I going to get it into Obsidian? Now, let's have a quick legal conversation. Okay, so uh, anyone coming from 5th edition would know that there is the uh, system reference document, which is a uh, document that basically says, these are the rules that you're free to use. And honestly, it's designed in a way that it gives you enough of the rules from every element of the rules, but not everything. All right, so you can go away and create third party content. And for a long time, uh, people who create digital tools have relied on that SRD to create the foundation for how they're going to support D&D 5th edition. All right, because it gives you just enough of the rules to create the coding that's required to go away and actually say, this is how my application is going to handle this. And then the community come along and they fill the gaps in with their own data. And they add in all the extra stuff that they need to play their game using that digital tool. I think Wizards of the Coast were trying to shut that down. Right? That's, that's the angle that they were taking. And I'll be honest, I still think they might try and shut that down because not everything is in the SDR. Okay, so there is still a gap there people need to be aware of that they, they may come along and knock on your digital tool and say, you're not allowed to do this anymore. But the good news for us is the tools like the, um, the Initiative Tracker plugin for Obsidian doesn't have to remove the D&D 5th edition SRD content, all right, because under the OGL that was coming out, they would have had to do that. All right, so with that aside, all the legalities, Pathfinder 2E, all right, Maybe you're looking at playing it. Maybe you're interested in using obsidian.md to manage your game as a campaign manager, or maybe you're a player and you want to use it to sort of do your journals. How quickly can you get the tool up and running? We're going to try to do that in a single video. Okay, so let's just start with a demo. This is what I have achieved so far on my vault with the assistance of some fantastic members of the community. So let's just do a quick shout out. I want to say a huge and massive thanks and apologies if I pronounce these wrong, but Sigruxia, uh, Fate, Javelint and Ubilient, I want to say a massive and huge thanks for all of your effort. You are doing an absolute wonder for the community. Okay, you've uh, run to the fire in regards to Pathfinder 2E and you have put the effort in. Um, guys, if you're using the content that they're creating, there's links to get them coffee on the GitHub that I'll show you later. I do recommend you support these guys because they have put in massive amount of hours to get this up and running and they have done it quickly. Like I am talking, we have gone from no Pathfinder second edition support to like having the entire mechanics database in less than two weeks. It's fantastic. All right, but with that aside, let's jump in and have a look on why you might use Obsidian for your Pathfinder game. All right, so what I've done is I've put in the digital box here, so you, um, or the beginner box. So you can see that I've got you know my my content. Um, we've got call out boxes that make it easier to read. I've got uh, some maps in here with pins that you can use to obviously come down and have a look at those things. Uh, you can even come in here, and I've got some bits which you can see with. Um, Sirenscape, where basically we're, we're, we've got some sound coming out. So let's just see if we can play some rats. There we go. Look at that. So I can do that from within Obsidian without even having to leave. Um, we've also got the ability to uh, show to players. All right, so you can drag that to a second screen that's facing your players and show them a picture. We've got stat blocks that are working. The stat blocks are absolutely beautiful, right? You can even hold your mouse over them and you can see the different sort of elements of information uh, that is available. So it makes it really easy to learn the system because instead of having to look up a stat block and go, oh, I need to go and check that God knows how many pages rule book, 
Um, you can just come in here and obviously do this. Um, there's dice rolling, all right? So you, you can actually roll it inside. If you're doing your secret rolls, you can do that quite easily without even having to reach for a dice so the players don't even know you're doing it. Um, there's initiative tracking, all right? So we can come in and click uh, begin combat. We've got the ability to have initiative tracking over here. Uh, you can come in here and apply damage, you can kill people, uh, you can apply status effects. I think we've even managed to get in, here it is, like we've got the status effects that are coming in from the system. All right, so that's fantastic as well. You can click on something and obviously the uh, stat block comes down here. So from running a game, it's really, really easy. Uh, you can change your initiative here, and you can see that just changes all the giant rats. So they're working in a group. Obviously this guy's dead, so he's not getting applied to anymore. But it's really, really handy. Keeping in mind as well that Obsidian is designed to link information together. So as you're going through and typing your notes, it's linking to all of the different things that you have. So this is an adventure. So let's just have that quick legal conversation, right? The, the SDR from Wizards of the Coast restricts what is available. Paizo has a complete different sort of uh, view on this. They just allow you to use all their mechanics. They make their money in the adventures. So what you won't find is this adventure shared on the community repository, okay? That's not something we're going to do. We're gonna stay legal with this. Um, basically, this is something you would have to put in yourself. But Paizo also give out PDFs, right? So you can go and you can purchase your content um, you can get the PDF and then you can copy from the PDF in. And honestly, like this took me just an evening, right? Which is just standard prep time. I just cut and paste or copy and paste into uh, Obsidian, um, just quickly format some of my things and off it goes. So what is available out there? Well, you know, we've got um, all of the activities, afflictions are done, I believe. I know there's one disease. Uh, backgrounds, I think, are on the way. All right, uh, bestiary, uh, so you can see here we've got bestiary one and two are largely done. Uh, we're still tweaking a few things, finding errors here and there and just putting the polish on it. But once we've finished the polish, like you're gonna find the bestiaries will be complete in no time, right? It takes us about five minutes per bestiary. Uh, conditions, feats, hazards, items. All right, this is all stuff that is available for uh, you to basically download straight into your vault, okay? So let's just have a quick walkthrough on how we make that happen. Okay, we're gonna start by doing this from the very beginning. All right, I'm gonna throw away my Pathfinder 2 e vault that I've made, and we're gonna do a new one. So we're gonna open up Obsidian. You're probably opening up for the first time and you might see a window like this. And what we can do is create a new vault. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna create a new vault. And this is the PF2E YouTube vault. All right, so that I know that I can get rid of it later. We're gonna come in here and we're going to stick it into where I stick all my vaults. So this can go anywhere on your computer and click create. That creates a brand new Obsidian vault, all right? It's completely empty, there is nothing in here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it look nicer because it doesn't look very nice right now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come into light mode all right, oh, that's really bright. I'm gonna come into themes. I'm gonna type in ITS, and I'm gonna install the ITS theme. Now, I use the ITS theme for all of my videos. People would have seen it around. Um, not everyone likes it, and that's fine. Like, there are people that, you know, don't want to use it. You're completely free to use what you like. But I personally find it quite useful. Now, I've got videos on how to set this up in other places. Um, but the ITS theme has a very important element in it, um, which is the uh, the CSS file. So the, the theme, all alternatives theme is CSS. Um, I'm just going to download this theme. Well, actually, I'm just gonna download this file. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna download it. Because what I need to do is just take that CSS file and copy it into a new location. So it's gonna open up Notepad. You don't need to do this for all themes. This is a ITS theme, but there is so much functionality that's included in here that I just recommend people get it. And it's things like the wiki style um, elements. 
All right, I'm going to save that. All right, and find my vault. All right, if we come in here, we should find that my Pathfinder YouTube vault is here. All right, you can see that this folder is completely empty. We're going to find the dot obsidian folder. If you can't see it, chances are that it's hidden. We're going to right click and go new folder, and we need to put a snippets folder in here. All right, snippets is where you put your CSS files. So in here, we're going to say, all right, this is called the theme all alternate, I think it's ITS theme, all alternate themes.css. You can call it whatever you want, all right, as long as it's got .css in the back. All right, now we shut that down, we close that. And we go back to Obsidian. Oh, my computer's having a heart attack. And now here under the appearance section, we can now come down here to the CSS snippet section, and you can see that there's now that theme, uh, that CSS file that we've created. So we turn that on. Now, what does that do? That does a whole heap of technical stuff in the background that's going to make this application look nicer and give you functionality such as the wiki style templates and picture adjustments and uh, all sorts of cool stuff. All right, now we're going to come over here to community plugins and we're going to come on and say turn on community plugins. All right, uh, restriction mode I've turned off. Basically, they're saying community plugins come with a risk. They do, right? You don't know what you're installing unless you're a coder, but I've got a lot of trust in these, so I'm going to turn it on. And in here, we've got a heap of plugins. So, oh, what are we going to install? I'm going to do various compliments. I install this on every single vault. It's one of the first things that I do. Click install, click enable. That makes automatic linking work really well. We're going to go initiative tracker by Jeremy Valentine. This is the combat manager. All right, so we're going to install that and then we're going to enable. We're going to go Dice Roller. Dice Roller by Jeremy Valentine. This one again is a TTRPG plugin that allows automatic rolling of dice inside of the application. Uh, you're starting to see Jeremy's name already. Yes, he is the man. He has made all of this stuff for us. Uh, TTRPG Stat Blocks. This is the Stat Block plugin. We're going to install that. And we're going to enable it again by Jeremy. This one's fantastic. Uh, we're going to do Leaflet, which is the map program. This is how you make maps and add pins to maps. Again, it's by Jeremy Valentine, and there's integration between his other plugins in this as well. Um, Advanced Tables is one I always go. So this is by Tony Grossinger. Uh, this makes working with tables a lot easier. Like, and I'm talking a lot easier. Um, there's another one that I need for this. Fantasy Calendar. Just go ahead and install it. If you want a fantasy custom calendar inside of your world, then this is fantastic. And out of the box, it has the default templates for the Paizo calendar, so that's good. Um, Markdown Attributes. Yes, Markdown Attributes is going to be used for something that I'm going to show you today. So go ahead and install it. Um, it's one of those ones that runs in the background that you don't really know it's there, but it's quite technical, but you'll see it makes it quite easy. All right, and second window. Second window is the one that I use to right click on images and send them to a second screen. Um, so it's really good for player facing screens. You can do that one if you want, you don't have to. All right, so now I've got my plugins installed. All right, now if you're brand new to Obsidian, you might want to slow down, and go watch one of my other videos. Like this is designed to get you up and running on Pathfinder second edition as quickly as possible. So. We've now gone through and we've uh, turned on all of our plugins. We still have absolutely no content in here. Where do we go? All right, so let's do this. Let's jump over. Where did I put it? Here's what I prepared earlier. Let's jump over to the um, Obsidian TTRPG share um, community vault. All right, so this is running on my GitHub account and it's basically designed as a public place for people to share TTRPG stuff. And there's a lot of, excuse me, cool stuff in here. Um, it's getting a lot of releases. You can see like there's, there's content going into it hourly sometimes um, with a whole heap of different systems in here. So if you're looking to play a different system, 
come along and check this out. It might be quite interesting for you. I've had questions about Pathfinder 1, um, Genesis, Fate, like all these other systems, like come and have a look. I will say this though, this is a legal repository. Don't come here expecting to find everything because that's not going to be here. All right, and please don't upload anything that isn't allowed to be shared. Okay, that's one of our rules. All right, so Pathfinder 2nd Edition, there's this uh, folder here. Now, this is where we're putting tools that we are building. Okay, so not necessarily content, but tools that we are building. Um, so we'll go into that one in a minute. Let's start though with the community vaults. So TTRPG share community vaults. This is where we're just putting content and you can see there's a subfolder here of Pathfinder 2nd Edition with a whole heap of stuff in there. So let's just start by doing this easily. I'm gonna go into Google, all right, and just so you guys can follow along. Download GitHub folder, type that into Google. All right, the first option that comes up for me is this download-directory.github.io. When you open it, it's gonna look like this. And the reason why we use this is it allows us to download a specific folder of stuff from GitHub. So what I can do is I can copy the URL from GitHub once I'm in the folder that I want and I wanna download all of this. I can come along to here, paste in my URL, press enter, all right, and it's gonna come along and it's going to download those files. Now, while that is happening, here is one I prepared earlier. All right, you can see it's got all of these folders. Now, what we're gonna do is gonna press Control A once we've opened up the zip file. Obviously, it's downloaded, we've opened it. Control A to select everything, Control C to copy everything, and we're going to go and find our vault. So I've got on my TPRPG hard drive. We're gonna come in here, we've got the PF2E YouTube vault. Okay, I'm just gonna paste straight in to there. That's gonna copy that all across. This is going to make my computer probably have a bit of a heart attack, but if we go over to Obsidian, you can actually see things starting to copy in, okay? So obviously we'll need for that to finish. And I will say this, Obsidian is pretty good at keeping up with any changes you make in the background in Windows. Um, but if you try to do a lot of files, sometimes it will have a bit of a heart attack and stop obviously updating that data. So we'll just have to give it a couple of minutes just to let it catch up. All right, we're looking at this specifically. And then what I recommend is that once this process is completed, that we go through and reload Obsidian. And what that does is that basically re-triggers an indexing of the new files that you've added. It's, it's, it can handle a couple, like a couple of hundred at a time, but if you throw and try and throw a thousand in there, it'll really slow down. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Now, something for us to consider here as this is happening is the structure. So you can see a lot of this is like mechanical stuff. And obviously anyone who's watched my videos before would know that I recommend that, you know, well, what I do personally is I put all my mechanics in a mechanics folder and I create a, a series of parent folders that can be used to sort of keep track of everything. And I'm gonna do the same thing in a minute here. Once this is complete, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna move all of this to my mechanics folder. And that's gonna isolate it nicely, keep it clean and out of the way. Um, because then what I'll do is I'll probably have a few other folders such as, you know, a party folder where I have a note for each party member. Um, or I might come along and have an adventure folder where I have the adventures that I'm copying. Um, another thing I like to have is a DM uh, screen folder that has links to sort of rules and references and things like that. I, I think that can be quite handy. All right, we're almost there. Three, two, one, and off we go. All right, so now we've got that. Whenever you do a large data update, what I always do is just go open the command palette and go reload, reload app without saving, and that's going to go through and completely reload this vault for you. And just as you can see, it's now triggering off that index process, which is just a nice way of obviously doing things. Um, now, while that's happening, I'm gonna come in here and type in my mechanics. Uh, create a folder for mechanics. I'm going to create a, a folder for the party. I'm going to create a folder for the world. All right. And then for anyone who's watched my other videos, ZZ underscore attachments. All right. That's an important folder. That's when you paste pictures. They usually go straight there. So what I recommend is you, you do that straight away. 
right click and go set as attachment folder. This way any new images that are added to your lot will automatically go into that folder and stay out of the way. Um, and another one is ZZ templates. All right, that's where we're going to put all of our templates that we use to make our life easier. Speaking of which, um, one thing I did not enable, if we go to core plugins, is the templates plugin. Oh, as you can see, it's already set up. But what we are going to do is just come in, check our hotkeys. All right, insert template is currently not actually set. So I'm just going to set that as Alt T. So that's how I trigger my templates. All right, so we've got a whole heap of stuff here. I'm actually going to jump back to Windows. Okay. So I've got World, Party, and Mechanics. Everything else has been imported. So I'm going to move that entire folder into Mechanics. Um, and as I said before, when you do large data updates, it's always a good idea to do a reset uh, or a reload of Obsidian. As you can see, it's kind of like frozen up on me now. It doesn't like it when you make a surprise move um, in the background. So we're just going to let this happen. We're going to do a reload. That's going to re um, obviously index everything. It's going to make the application run better once it actually does come out of this big change. Um, but yeah, whenever you do a massive change, always go through and do a reload. All right, so what did we just do? We just did amazing, right? We now have activities, we have backgrounds, all right? These things are all in here, ready to rock and roll. All right, we can see we're getting some errors there. So what is that? Well, that is data view. So let's come into community plugins and let's turn on data view. Data view is an amazing plugin for like pulling information and um, uh, sort of doing like almost SQL queries on stuff. So you don't need to worry about that if you're new to the tool, but it will obviously make it better for us to work. Um, and we've got GM screen here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find the Kanban plugin. I'm going to enable the Kanban plugin. Install, enable, done. Let's just have a look at the GM screen. Did it work? Yes. Is it linked? Well, we have to go to Kanban. I think we have to go to the Kanban settings. And we have to enable the ability to preview. Actually, I think it's actually under core plugins. Page preview, settings, Kanban. All right, so you can actually untick that if you want to be able to hover. All right, so now I can hover and I get my rules. So Kanban, you now have a working GM screen. I'm going to drag that just up. Uh, always update. All right, because I like to have my GM screen on the top of everything. That's where I like to have it. I got a rules reference there. And fantastic, off we go. All right. Just remember that it doesn't look quite the way I like it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to Community Plugins and type in Style Settings. And we're going to install Style Settings and enable it. All right, and then we're going to go into the options of Style Settings. And you can see that there's already an In the Shadows or ITS theme going on. All right, and we can now come in here and we can pick a theme that matches the color of what we want. All right, there's lots of different ones here. There's the Wizards of the Coast, if you like that one. All right, I might actually this time go with like a nice blue. All right, there we go. Now, New Vault, one of the things I also really like to do is turn off readable line length. That will make it take up the entire page. Um, I also like to turn off live preview and go into source mode. Uh, because that way it means that I'm, I'm seeing the editing mode of a page and the rendering mode of a page. Um, I just like to do it separately, so that's preference. All right, so already we're what, probably half an hour in at this point. We have most of the rules. We have bestiaries ready to rock and roll. No, we don't. All right, that's going to be the next thing that we're going to look at. Uh, but we've got spells. All right, you've got ritual spells. You've got focus spells. 
Uh, you've got the ability to create a note and actually probably link that. So fireball spell, right? That's the various compliments plugin. The spell I cast if you die. Dying, so you can use the dying rule. I can do a pipe and rename it. Read these rules. All right, so that's all starting to work out quite nicely. The automatic linking is working. All right, let's move on to the next bit, which is a little bit harder, and this is how to do the TTRPG stat blocks. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to go back to the GitHub link, all right, and this will be linked in the uh, description for you all to get access to. We're going to come down here to the Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and we're going to come in here and grab this folder. So we're going to grab the URL, we're going to go to the download GitHub directory, press enter. That's going to download 774 files for us. Um, and we're going to start messing around with those. Three, two, one, off we go. And download. All right, so we'll open that. It's just doing its virus checking and all that sort of loveliness. I think I've actually got this open on another screen, to be honest. Yep, here we go. All right, so it's downloaded. Uh, we've now got the bestiary and the bestiary layouts. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to grab the uh, bestiary. Okay, so I'm going to right click on here and go show in System Explorer. That's going to open up Windows Explorer. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into Beast Jerry. All right, we've got Beast Jerry's here. And I'm going to copy from the zip file that I got before. I'm going to copy these two folders in. All right, that's going to give us the, uh, the monster stack blocks effectively. All right, while that one is happening in the background, we need to get ready for how we're going to actually visualize these stack blocks. Because right now, these are going to come across as text. Um, we do have the TTRPG stat block plugin installed, and that's what's basically designed to render these into something lovely. Um, but for purposes of testing, we'll show you in a second that you can't actually sort of use them usefully um, like this, all right, out of the box. We need to do some other stuff. So three, two, one. All right, so let's just have a look at what we just did. We've now got bestiary one complete. All right, we've got a entire sort of stat block in here, but you can see it's very much empty. It's not working. All right, why is that? That is because we need to give it the stat block template. So we're going to go into bestiary layouts. Okay, we're going to have a look in here. There's this one here. There's a uh, template second edition monsters handlebar file. If you are using, uh, or if you know what you're doing with handlebar and the JSON CSV import tool, this can be used to import monsters from the PF2E tools um, repository. Okay, so if you can get the JSON files from there, uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just simply drag this into here, right? This is my templates folder. So what I like to do is create a handlebar templates. This is an advanced topic, guys. Like, don't, don't get worried if you're not keeping along here. All right, and that will be used to import new monster books. All right, but also what else do I need? I need to bring in uh, some CSS. All right, so what I've done is we're back here. We're in the zip file under Beastry Layouts. We're in the Attachments folder. And in here, we've now got a few more files that we need. So the CSS files, there's one for the ITS. You can ignore that. That's no longer required as of today. But there's a CSS one. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here we're going to find our vault folder. We're going to find our dot obsidian folder. And we're going to find our snippets folder that we made before. And we're going to paste in this uh, CSS, all right, which is the Pathfinder 2E TTRPG stat block CSS file. All right, once that's there, we can come into appearance. We can come down here to CSS snippets and reload. Uh, sorry, you can reload and turn that on if it's not already there. All right, so that's now enabled. 
Now we need to install the actual stat block that we're going to use. Uh, that one was not there. It's in here. This one here, the PF2 E block JSON. All right. We're going to copy that. Do I need that one? No, no. Yep. Yeah, we're going to copy that. I personally just put that in my downloads. All right. You can see my files are there, but you just put it in the downloads. Put it somewhere, anywhere you can find it. All right. I've now got that. And what we need to do is come down to settings and the TTRPG stat blocks settings. Come down to layouts. Go import from JSON. And we're going to go up to downloads. And we're going to use that file, all right, which is now imported the PF2E block there. Now, you can see that the default layout does not list this new one that I've just done. So what I've uh, come to find is you just come in here and you go to the command prompt and you go reload app without saving. That will reload this, oh, prettiness, straight away. All right, but we still need to go back into the TTRPG stat block settings and change the default layout down to path to a block, okay? And then what I've found is that it's always a good idea once you do this to actually come in and do another reload just to make sure that it's picked up what it's doing. Now you saw already that as soon as I did that reload, um, the stat blocks came alive. Okay, so we're almost there. We've, we've basically got them working now. The ones that you uh, download in the actual folder will always render successfully because it actually they're forced to use the right uh, TTRPG stat block template. But if you were to try and use that outside of that tool in another place, you would probably find that that wouldn't work. Okay, so that's why we've got to do that two-step process where we, we go in and we load the, um, the template and then we go in and we define it as the original. All right, so we have a stat block. They are absolutely beautiful. Uh, they've got dice, all right, you can do that. If you would like to render the dice in a, uh, a nicer way, uh, you can come in here, render dice, okay. We're gonna pass the front matter for creatures, so turn that on. All right, and now, does that work? I think we might need to do another reload. All right, as you can see, like setting your plugins up usually does take the most amount of time and the, the most amount of reloads. Um, you can obviously do all of these steps and not reload in between, but for the purposes of this video, I think it's probably easier for you to see each step of the way and what sort of impact and change it has. So come on, Cache, catch on up. There we go. All right, so did that work? No, uh, not quite. All right. There is a way to do this. What it looks like uh, is not working at all. Hang on, maybe it's Dice Roller. I need to go into Dice Roller. Display, display dice. Always render dice. All right, let's try that again. Now let's try the reload again. Sorry guys, no, you're a little bit slower than I had hoped, but you'll understand why in a minute. Usually when I stuff something up, you guys seem to take more value from that anyway than when I make it a perfect run. It can be quite useful to see how things are broken and how I react when I fix it, I guess. All right, did that work? 1D20. No, still not working, so I'll need to go away and do some uh, some checking on that. I'm pretty sure that should have worked. But anyway, all it does is it rolls the dice in a nice, oh there you go, display graphics for dice roll views. I think it's that one. There we go. All right, oh, there we go, roll a three. All right, but now if we roll this one, see how that works as well. So now we've got 3D dice rolling through, and that's obviously all lovely. Now, I roll physical dice at my table, so you might not need all of these, but it is certainly quite lovely the fact that it's all available, right? And you can see um, see the results here. And you can roll in secret if you want. That is a thing in Pathfinder, so you can use that however you like. Um, if we come down here, we can see that we've also got a section here for the initiative tracker. So if we press launch and counter, right, it actually puts the uh, adamantite golem into combat, and we can go from there. 
You will still need to set up some things. Uh, looks like we might have an issue that we will need to fix with the HP again, but I will raise that with the community. I don't know why that didn't work actually, because it looks like it's all there. Um, but yeah, so now you have monsters and you have the bestiary all ready to rock and roll. If we come back to our note, all right, we can actually add these in. Now this is the next thing that I'm going to recommend is that you create some templates. Okay, if we come in here, what I usually do is go new folder and I call it um, Markdown Templates. All right, and then what I usually do is just to keep things organized, I go Combat Templates. Um, and what we're looking for is we're going to go to our TTRPG stat box and we're going to have a look, sorry, under Community Plugins and then TTRPG stat box we're going to have a look at the readme. Now the reason for this is we want this code here. Now what I recommend you do is you right click, go new note, insert monster, right, and you paste this in. I usually put a default name in there. There we go. I might not have orcs installed. Which ones do I have installed? Bestiary, bestiary. It's not there. Actually, I think I need that name there. I'm going to put that in here. All right, boom, that comes through. So as long as you've got the book in your bestiary, it should come through. Now. Obviously that's for displaying a monster stat block in your notes. All right, so what you can do now is you can come along. Remember we set our hotkey for setting off a template before. I set it to Alt-T. Go Alt-T, didn't work. <laughs> let's just check that again. Uh, let's go hotkeys. Ah, uh, I know what I haven't done. I haven't set my template folder. So we'll come in here to core plugins. We're going to come in here to templates and go into settings. We're going to come in here and we're going to type in zz underscore templates. All right. And now when I press Alt T, it triggers it and it shows me a list of the templates. And I can go insert monster. All right. And I can just change the name of this to match the name of the monster that I want. And I now have the stat block. All right. So let's do that, uh, but take it a next bit further. We're going to go Community Plugins. We're going to look for Initiative Tracker. We're going to come down here and we're going to have a look at the example. We're going to copy that. And we're going to create a new template. All right, this will be Insert Encounter Tracker. All right, we're going to paste that. We get rid of this extra bit up here. We have three goblins. I put M efforts in there. I'm going to change it to a one. All right. That now triggers M efforts in there. All right. Fantastic. And now if we go to a normal note, say we're prepping in some content, we press Alt T and we've got insert encounter. All right. And we can change the name to whatever we want. We can change the number of M efforts to whatever we want and we now have the ability to trigger combat. Now, this button here triggers an entire combat. This button here, it will just basically add that monster to the encounter. All right, well, that came quickly. That, uh, that achieved a lot. All right, so there's uh, a next step. Let's take this even further. So we've got the, uh, the download that we had before. Where did we put it? Downloads, I think it's in this one. All right, we have action items. Oh, and we also have conditions. All right, let's do conditions first. So conditions is quite simple. Uh, we're basically installing the conditions for the first time. So what you can actually do, I believe, is just copy this data.json file. All right, only do this on a fresh vault. If you're doing an old vote, you need to copy this in manually. We're going to copy this data.json file. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our vault. We're going to go into our .obsidian folder, plugins. 
we're going to find initiative tracker. We're going to find, is it that one? Yes, I'm pretty sure this is it. Data.json. We're going to do a reload. What I've just done is I've copied the Pathfinder second edition conditions into this tool here. So what that means is I can come in here, click a monster, and we can get the conditions. There we go. All right, so all the Pathfinder conditions are now there. All right, so that's what that does. All right, and as you can see, it's all linked. So when you hold over those conditions, you can actually see the rules pop up as well. So this is like, this is a fantastic uh, sort of addition. It makes it quite easy. Now from memory, I think you might even be able to modify these from in here. Yeah, here we go. So you can see all the PF ones. So you might want to just come in here to the initiative tracker settings and actually just delete the ones that are linked from the D&D 5th edition SRD, because that's what system these come from. And then that way, you only have the Pathfinder ones. There you go. There's a lot more of them. But don't be afraid of some crunch. All right, so that's done. So that was cool. That was easy. We now have conditions. Makes it easy to run combat. What's next? Um, I've personally found that having some sheets, um, sort of like crib sheets, is really helpful. And that's what the last thing we have to offer you today is. So we'll go into uh, attachments, go into our zip file that we downloaded. We're going to have a look at this thing called action items. All right, now there's a whole heap of stuff in here. Uh, there's standalone um, zips. We don't need those. There's some instructions here that you can follow. You will see that there's an actions font.css. So we need to copy that. Um, and if you've been following along at home, you'll probably know that you need to put this in your .obsidian folder and then into your snippets folder. All right. Now we're going to, in Obsidian, go into settings and appearance and come down here and make sure that we turn that on. What did that do? That's basically given us the fonts that we need to do these action icons, okay? Um, and use it in notes. So let's go back to our action items and have a look. We've now got templates, okay? So we're gonna copy all of these templates and I'm gonna go to our vault. We're gonna go back to our core and go into templates. I've got markdown. I've got combat templates. I'm going to call them action item templates or PF action items. I just like keeping them organized. You don't have to do this. All right, paste them in. And if we come and have a look in here, in our note, we can expand out templates. We can see that we've now added those in. Um, and what did that allow us to do? We can press Alt T and we now have the actions. Okay, so let's just put them all in for the sake of it. Probably should have dropped them onto their own thing. And if we render this note, we can now see that we have the action icons, which means you can put them into your notes wherever you need them. But right, if you're creating a custom monster or a trap or pretty much anything. You can now just use your Alt-T to bring this up and say, oh, boom, this is a thing I'm going to use. Now, there's one more thing in here that we'll show you. Um, not in this one. Go back into action items, and we're going to have a look in the notes folder. All right, now the notes folder has two cheat sheets that I found quite helpful. So we'll come back to our thing. I'm going to put these in the GM screen. All right, and we've got action cheat sheets and skill action cheat sheets. And if we now come into our vault and we expand that out, we can now see our action cheat sheet. All right, and we now have all of the action cheat sheets that's completely linked. It's got the icons to show you how many, um, obviously, actions these things take. And that'll just obviously help you learn the game. If you're getting questions while you're playing, that's quite useful. And the skill actions cheat sheet is there as well. Some people will recognize this from the book. But you know, if you've got athletics and you're untrained, these are the things you can do. Uh, where if you've got acrobatics and you're trained, you can do maneuver and flight and squeeze as well. Um, we're still cleaning some of this up as you can see, but it's certainly getting there. All right, 
that's it guys like that is a quick video and I've designed this as a quick video I apologize for those who are going slow down Josh this is crazy because we just covered a lot of content uh, you can obviously slow this video down if it was going too fast um, or pause do what I tell you and then just obviously resume it's designed to get people up and running with Pathfinder second edition as quickly and as efficiently as possible and get you to a point where you're ready to start doing what we're doing all right, and really, from this point here, you're now ready to play Pathfinder Second Edition, with the exception of adventures. All right, so go purchase your PDFs. Um, they cut and paste really nicely. Um, I'm sure there's some clever people out there who can figure out how to pass those PDFs in as Markdown as well. Or if you do a Google, there's probably tools. But in my experience, it is quicker just to copy and paste because of all the formatting nuances that are going to occur. So I just cut and paste mine in, um, organize them as I go, and off you go. Um, while we are here, just before I do go, I will say there's one other thing that I really recommend you set up, um, and that is a callouts. All right, I don't know if we got callouts specifically in the share vault, but I will add them so that you guys can get access to them. Um, but what I'm just going to quickly do is I'm going to grab them from one of my other vaults. I'm just showing you guys so you can see what sort of things I have as, um, sort of templates, but callouts are really, really handy. If we go into markdown, we've got callout boxes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the vault. And I'm going to put those in. So we'll go back into YouTube, go into templates, go into markdown templates and paste the callouts. Oh, see I'm in a callouts box already, but I don't even need. Cool. All right, but now I've got a call-out boxes in there. I've got all the different types of call-outs that can be done. And just to show you why I do that, right, now I can come down here into my note and say, Alt-T, activate a um, template, and I want a call-out box, and I want a read-aloud box. This is to read-aloud. All right, and what does that do? When you render your note, that now gives you your read-aloud box. Okay, so it's probably one of the most recommended uh, templates that I use because I just use it all the damn time. Anyway, guys, I hope this has been useful for you. Um, I hope this gives you a really solid foundation to go and get started with playing Pathfinder Second Edition using Obsidian.md. Um, obviously, if you've got any questions or you want help or if you want to assist the community with this effort, the places to come and find us are the official Discord um, for Obsidian.md. It's got a TTRPG channel, tabletop role-playing games. It's got sub-channels in there for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and there are people that are working on it. Outside of that, my Patreon comes with access to a private Discord server that is quickly turning into an absolute active bumble of activity. It's crazy. Um, and we've got channels in there for all sorts of different games to help people with finding the data they need to get up and running with this tool. Okay, so it's a really strong community, some really, really clever, way more clever than I am um, people in there that are basically just helping us really get the most out of this tool. So again, to my patrons, like massive, huge thanks. You guys are amazing. Um, you're, you're really like the guys I said at the start of the video, you are making it possible for us to change systems so quickly. Um, the other one is the Facebook uh, user group. Uh, so the Facebook TTRPG user group, there's a lot of us hiding in there. Um, I am finding though that we are moving to Discord um, because there's more activity on the Discord with a larger user base. So, um, you know, feel free to hit me up in any three of those places. Um, if you've got questions, um, usually my patron is the best way to get access to me if you need like personal one on one help. Um, all right, outside of that, I want to say um, obviously have a fantastic day. Enjoy your dice rolling. I'm glad this OGL nightmare is coming to a rest, but also I think a really positive outcome of that is people have explored different games, and I, I think that's really healthy. So, without further ado, guys, have a fantastic day. I will speak to you on the socials.